Sometimes I get drunk and I get into arguments with taxi drivers and I get out the cab and I slam the door. That's not the way to win an argument with a taxi driver. The way to win is you get out the cab and you leave the door open. <laughs> then he has to step out, come around and close that door while he's doing that. I'm on the other side opening the other doors. <laughs> and we just keep going around and around and around and around. And I got my own Benny Hill situation going on in life. It's great. <laughs> I go to concerts when I'm not working. I like going to see music. Even if it's bad, I take something from it. I, just, I, I go to a lot of rap shows. I was in Montreal. I wanted to see this funny rapper, Riff Rap. Riff Rap is entertaining to me. Uh, also, I had a show in Montreal. Oh, I didn't fly up for a Riff Rap show. <laughs> Let's get that straight. <laughs> he is entertaining. Riff Rap really is it, funny. His show was funny because he didn't... He just played, his, his DJ played his music with the vocals, and then he was just up there with a beard, chilling, listening to his songs, and then every now and then he would come in and say two words, and he'd go back. Basically, he got paid to vibe out to his own music on stage, <laughs> which is good work if you can get it. I mean, it seemed kind of disrespectful to his fans, but nobody seemed to mind, it's whatever. It seemed like a fun way to approach it. I want to approach comedy like that and just play my own shit. I don't do it now, hey. So I have a situation in my apartment right now. I have a surplus of pickle juice in my apartment. There's too much pickle juice, because after the pickles are gone, I don't like throwing out the pickle juice. It just feels wasteful. Right. So lately, I've been dipping my fingers in the pickle juice, and I flick it on my sandwiches for flavor. You see, that's a fun way to do comedy right there. It's way easier, way easier stuff. I have weird aspirations, like I really want to kick a pigeon. Because pigeons walk around like they're invincible. I'm like, you're not invincible, I'll kick the hell out of you. You're not waiting for the bus because you can fly. I can't kick pigeons because there's always people around. And if I kick a pigeon, some woman will see, oh my gosh, that guy just kicked a pigeon in broad day. Like, she go home and tell her husband, honey, I saw this guy kick a pigeon in broad daylight. Her husband tell his boss, my wife said this guy kicked a pigeon in broad daylight. His boss knows somebody at the paper, next thing you know, front page, black dudes are kicking pigeons. <laughs> There's been a flurry of pigeon kicking going on. The black community must be stopped at once. Save the pigeons. Must stop these PKBPs, pigeon kicking black people. <laughs> Save the pigeons. Acronyms are hilarious. I don't know why I want to kick a pigeon, I just figured it'd make my day better. So I kick a pigeon in the morning, something bad happens that evening, I'm like, you know what, that happened, but I kicked a pigeon earlier. It was relaxing and invigorating. I want to have the pigeon kicking Olympics, where you get judged by the distance that you kick the pigeon, the number of feathers you kick off the pigeon, and the octave of a squat. When you kick the pigeon like a high pitch, like, woo! That's a gold medal right there. You kick the hell out of that pigeon, you're a goddamn warrior. And you deserve your own statue in the park, like, yeah. I don't like the environment at all. I'm not an <laughs> environmental person. Sometimes I let the water run for 45 minutes before I hop in the shower. <laughs> Just to do it, it keeps running, it won't stop running. It makes me feel, all, it makes me feel like the Poseidon of my apartment building. <laughs> let the water flow, it just keeps running. It's so wasteful, but it feels awesome. <laughs> you never know, I might be saving somebody. Say some dude is drowning <laughs> in a lake or the river or whatever, he's drowning, but the water only comes up to like right there <laughs> because I decided to play a game of Madden before I hopped in the shower. <laughs> I'm a hero, my methods are just different from yours. These are Tom sunglasses right here. And uh, on top, it says, give sight. Because when <laughs> you buy a pair of sunglasses, they uh, give an underprivileged kid a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> so that kid will be hungry, but he'll look cool as That's what it's about. And maybe with his cool look, 
he can convince a girl to give him some food. Whenever people are going through a struggle in life, they get really cliche, they say stuff like, I'm taking it one day at a time. Just taking it one day at a time. You know who else is? Everybody, because that's how time works. That's the only way you can take time. What were you doing it a week at a time before? Who are you? Who taught you how to do that? Please teach me how to do that. I want to get through this quicker too. I don't like when people say, I'll pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. Praying for you. You're going to pray for me? So you're going to sit at home and do nothing? Because that's what your prayers are. You doing nothing while I struggle with a situation. Don't pray for me. Make me a sandwich or something. Because I'm very upset right now and I can't make my own sandwiches. So that'll be cool. If you made me a sandwich instead of praying, it was just kind of lazy. Take action. <laughs> well, we'll keep you in our thoughts with the other bull <laughs> in your head now. <laughs> keep me out of your thoughts, because I hear some of the stuff you talk about, and that's close to what you're thinking about. I don't want to be around that at all, so keep me and my family out of your thoughts unless you're thinking about making us sandwiches. <laughs> my favorite place that I've traveled is New Orleans. Like New Orleans a lot, Mostly because you can drink in the street. That's a big deal to be able to drink in the street. And I love going into a bar that, hey, give me a Jameson ginger ale. It's a go. I don't like this place. <laughs> I don't like this place. I don't like the music you're playing. I think that chair's weird. I want my drink in a plastic cup to go. And I'm hitting the streets with that drink. I'll go into another bar with that drink in my hand, and I'll be ahead of the game already. <laughs> it's a good city, though. It's a beautiful city. Good music, good food, good partying. So, a little while ago, we decided to throw my cousin's bachelor party there. I'm the best man. I'm in charge of the party. That's a big responsibility. I wanted to be cool. And one of my friends said, Hannibal, you should hire a second line to follow you through the street. I said, what is that? He said, second line is a band, mostly brass instruments. You can hire them to follow you through the street. So basically, in New Orleans, for $300, you can have your own parade on a day's notice. I said, this sounds great. How do I do this? You got to go to the police station. They have a parade department. New Orleans police has a parade department. There's homicide, there's narcotics, and there's parades. <laughs> there's other departments too, but you know, rule of three for comedy. So I go to the police station. <laughs> I want to throw a parade. How many people in your parade? Five of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five people. Do you need help making a route for your parade? Yeah, I need help making a route. I'm not from here. This is your city. This is not my city. This policeman in full uniform starts helping me make a route for a five-person parade. <laughs> and was real nice about it. Okay, you don't want to hit Bourbon Street too fast. You probably want to start on Canal Street, Fairyland, and you work your way towards Bourbon Street. You get on Iberville, some people on that street will probably join your parade. <laughs> because strangers just join your parade. That's part of it. Somebody's walking by themselves. Oh, that looks like a very accessible parade right there. I'm gonna jump in that, I'll walk with them for a few blocks, it's way safer than walking alone. And I can walk with a band behind me, that's the best side pod ever. <laughs> so now we're set, we got the band booked, we got our route. Next day after dinner, we go to that corner, waiting for us there is the band and the three-piece police escort. Because in New Orleans, for $300, you can <laughs> up traffic on a day's notice. <laughs> The streets are yours for a very small price, and we just start walking around. That's all you do is walk around. Band behind you, police in front of you, it's the best way to walk around. I've been walking around since 1983, and this is the most fun I had doing it, by far. <laughs> of course, we gotta get drinks, so I'll stop at a bar. Hey, give us five Jameson ginger ales to go <laughs> this place. We got a goddamn parade happening outside. <laughs> Not hanging out of here. Do you see the energy out there, sir? Then when we get outside with the drinks, one of the cops says, man, why'd you get drinks? You should have just bought a whole bottle of liquor beforehand. <laughs> a policeman said that. That's a direct quote from a uniformed New Orleans police officer. I'm so glad I don't live there, because if I did, all I'd do was drink, gamble, and throw parades for myself all the time. <laughs> Is that him again? Yeah, 6.30 on Monday. That's Hannibal time right there. I don't know why he does it on Monday. That seems like a weekend thing, and he does it so early. That's weird. So I got nephews and nieces. I understand my nephews always crying. I'm like, dude, why are you crying? Your life is great. All you do is eat applesauce and take dumps. That's your day. <laughs> my sister's like, Hannibal, he's crying because he's sleepy. I'm like, why does he just go to sleep then? Because <laughs> that's what I do when I'm sleepy. I just go to sleep. I don't stay woke. Like, I'm so sleepy. 
I'm so sleepy and exhausted. I'm so tired right now. What should I do about this? Hey, man, just go to sleep. Because right now, you're wasting time. You could be spending sleeping with your crying. Why aren't you a more practical baby? I think this baby's really horrible at time management. <laughs> he should learn how to manage his time more effectively. <laughs> My niece is four. She's very smart. Two smartphones, good. She was coloring one day, and I tried to connect with her on like a coloring level. <laughs> I grabbed the red crayon, put a little red on the paper. I grabbed the blue crayon, put a little blue on the red. I was like, look, Peyton, red and blue makes purple. She was like, I got a purple crayon right here. <laughs> like, touche, that was the dumbest I ever felt <laughs> in life. And a four-year-old did it. <laughs> so one night I was out, it was five in the morning, having some drinks, I was talking with this girl, I decided to take a swing. I say, how about we go back to my place for some food and some drinks? Most women would say, yeah, that sounds cool, or, Nah, I'm all right, but what she said was, what type of food are we talking about? <laughs> and what type of drinks are we talking about? And do you expect me to have sex with you if I come back to your place? Well, if you come back to my place at five in the morning and eat all my food and drink all my drinks and you don't want to have sex, then I don't want you in my life at all. all right, what type of person to do something like that? That sounds like something a sociopath would do. Come to your place, eat your food, drink your drinks, leave at 6.30 without f***ing like it's cool. That's a passive burglary. <laughs> and as soon as she said that, I should have clocked this woman was crazy, but I was kind of drunk, so I went, oh, she's kind of quirky. <laughs> she's kind of quirky and weird. So we talk for a little bit. She says stuff, I say stuff. She says stuff, I say stuff. You know how a conversation works. <laughs> I think it's going well. I go in for the kiss. She says, what? You think you can just kiss me? Western men and men in general think they're entitled to whatever they want from women. You objectify us. She started going on this weird feminist rant. Hey, it's fine if you want to be a feminist, but I think five in the morning after the bar closes is a weird time to jump on your soapbox. <laughs> and men just want to f Yes, yeah, five in the morning. Everybody wants to. That's why they stayed out till five, because it didn't happen at two. So we keep talking for some reason. She wants to know my address. She's showing interest. I tell her the address, then we want to go a little further. She wants to know the address plus the cross street. And she texts it to herself after I tell her. I say, what's wrong? She says, I have to be safe. Three out of 10 women that get raped don't report. And I said, one out of one dudes is walking away from this conversation. <laughs> And she said, what's wrong? I said, you a crazy person, that's what's wrong. And right now, it sounds kind of risky to hang out with you. And I didn't know this about myself until today, but I don't hang out with anybody that quotes rape statistics. There's nobody in my life that does that. That's such a weird trait to have. I'm a black man in Scotland on a work visa. You talking about rape, they're gonna believe any bullshit you say. I gotta go. But super drunk women can't handle rejection. She was just trying to explain. Hannibal, please let me explain. No, you've explained enough with your words. Hannibal, why was wrong? You are insane, lady. That's what's wrong. Hannibal, I just want to educate people. This is a weird ass time for that type of class. Hannibal, why? Come on. No, go away, lady. Give me 30 seconds to explain. No, I don't want to talk to you. Hannibal, please stop walking away. Get away from me. Hannibal, please. Hey, lady, you're acting like a rapist right now. I told you I don't want to talk with you, but you keep on talking to me. You are raping my eardrums. I feel real threatened. No means no.